good morning everyone. A beautiful day here in late May. Perfect weather for a hardscaping project. We're here in Holidaysburg and we're putting in a walkway and a patio. On this video, we're gonna talk about tips and tricks on building a uh, patio walkway with pavers that's going to look good and last long. So I'm going to be giving pointers on longevity, installing something that's gonna look good 10 years from now, and also aesthetically, uh, how we design to build something that looks nice. So we have uh, timber, brick, concrete, whatever, walkway right here. We're gonna take it out. We're going to make it a little wider, that's too narrow, and we're gonna take out the sharp 90s in it, and our hardscape, all the hardscape we do, for the most part, has um, gentle curves in it rather than sharp 90s. Uh, curved walkways look better. And we're gonna move out a little bit further and try to get a little bit of bigger planting bed between the um, walkway and the house. So, walkway come back in here, curving around here, and a patio back in this space. These steps are going to be eliminated. We're going to make it all one grade. First things first, we have to tear down this wall. It's a dry stack wall that's starting to fill. I'm guessing there's no um, clean stone behind it, so freeze and thaw of the dirt that's behind it pushes out the wall. We're going to rebuild that, and today we're going to talk about the beginnings of patio and walkway construction, which is going to be shooting your grades doing your excavation, and getting started on compaction. Okay, so I just painted out here what we have. As you can see, nice gentle curves out here, all the way along there. That's what I just painted out. This will leave us a nice planting bed in here, and we'll get a nice specimen tree of some kind right in the middle. That'll look nice. I would like to start excavating now, but we're gonna have to rebuild that wall first. So let's do that, get it out of the way, and then we can talk about starting excavation. All right, so first step of your outdoor patio walkway project is deciding where you want to put it. Uh, grab yourself a can of orange marking paint, go into your backyard and paint out your lines. These are the lines that I excavate off of. So if you want a four foot walkway, mark out five foot walkway or six inches extra on either side because you want, if you want a four foot walkway, you want six inches extra on either side. So you're gonna be going a five foot walkway while you're marking. Then when you're done, it's not gonna be right. So you can go along with your boot and kick it all out and paint a new line. Or you can keep painting lines on top until nobody knows where to dig anymore. You don't have to do that, but, but it helps. Now I'm going to get my laser transit out. It's just a machine that shoots a laser beam and hits your target. The target is the reader and tells you whether you're level or not. Those are expensive pieces of equipment that you're probably not gonna have in your garage. They can be rendered pretty easy. Most rental places will have one. I think like uh, Lowe's and Home Depot will even rent out laser transit. So I'm going to get that out and show you guys how to set it up and we'll talk about uh, shooting grades so that the water from your patio is gonna end up where you want it instead of in your basement. Okay, so I've decided where I want to put my patio. I've marked it out. I have paint marks where I want to dig. Now, how deep do I dig? And how do I make sure that where I'm digging is level so that I have enough of room to pack in stone? All hardscape is going to sit on six inches of compacted 2A and an inch of a number nine setting bed. I'll show you those when we put them in. And so we need six inches of compacted 2A and an inch of a setting bed and then two inches of paver. So that's nine inches. So I figure 
10 inches of excavation. So obviously, if I would pack in my six inches of stone and an inch of setting bed and two inches of paver, I would be up here. Not cool. It needs to come in flush. So I need to go down. So find the point where you want to run your pavers in. That could be a driveway, it could be your front door, it could be the bottom step. Wherever you want to run your pavers in, find your point there and set your laser off of that and do 10 inches down from that and then that's what you use to shoot to shoot the grade. So these laser transits, so when I stop and I look at that, I'm going to want my, my pitch, my patio, to fall away from the house, away from the door, an inch and a half per 10 feet. So if you get a laser transit that doesn't shoot a slope, it just shoots a level laser beam, you're going to have to drop an inch, take a tape measure, measure 10 feet, and every 10 feet you drop another inch. Every 10 feet you drop another inch. So if I set it on the doorway over there, by the time I'm 30 feet away from there, I'll be three inches lower. Some of these transits allow you to actually shoot a grade. So you can see the laser beam spinning right here. This one allows me to enter in a percentage of slope. I'm going to slope it one and a half percent away from the house. One and a half percent is the same as an inch and a half per 10 feet. So if you have a laser that actually shoots a slope, a percent and a half is what you want to shoot. That is enough so that water sheds, but flat enough that you'll hardly notice it. And same, if you don't have one that shoots a, a slope, just drop your laser inch and a half per every 10 feet as you go. This one is sloping at a percent and a half away from the house. So from that doorway down to here, it's probably going to be two inches lower here than it is there. So I know that any water that falls on here is gonna end up here. And then this, wall, this I'm gonna shoot a pitch from the walkway to the blacktop right there. So water is gonna come down in here, run off of the patio into the grass. From here, it'll run down into the driveway. So yeah, sloping your excavation, sloping your packing in stone is a big part of making sure that what you're building is functional. I've seen cases where patios have been sloped towards the house and you get water lying against the side of the house or water doesn't drain properly and it sits on the pavers and eventually you'll have a dip there. So make sure that you have a strong enough of a pitch so your water doesn't sit still. So I'm gonna find that laser beam. This target basically will catch that beam and tell me that laser beam and tell me what I'm doing. Now, this is already shooting a percent and a half, so I don't need to adjust my stick. Otherwise, I would measure out 10 feet, and I'd drop an inch and a half. 10 feet again, and I'd drop another inch and a half. But before you start digging, check to make sure that the patio you're building makes sense with the grade. Patio height is gonna be right here, which is very workable. If patio height was here, you'd have to build a wall or something, because obviously you can't build up, you, probably don't want to build up that much dirt. If, pa if patio hikes was like eight inches below grade, you'd have to build a wall to retain the bank of dirt that would be behind it. In this case, we don't have to build any walls. It's flat enough. It makes sense the whole way. Let's see where patio hikes would be here, right there. So that's not gonna be a problem. I'd be able to grade that off pretty easily. Now, that's patio height. Uh, other thing you might want to check is along the side of the house. Where's patio height going to be here? Is it going to do something dumb like expose ugly looking veneer? Nope. What's patio height going to be on our wall? You can check that right here. That's pretty good. How's it going to run into this step? Okay, so this step is a little bit higher. And I'll be able to follow the laser until maybe about right here and then I'll just go from this point to that step and just kind of eyeball that grade. It's gonna go uphill a little bit, but it's so close, you're not gonna be able to pick it up. It's probably two inches. And that's gonna push some water that way because this is gonna be higher, it's gonna push some water that way, which is okay because remember, my whole pad is sloped that way. So even if it rolls down here a bit, it's not gonna go very far until it's gonna roll out away from the house because of my pitch. So that's patio hike. I'm going to move down nine inches 
And if I want to make my laser stick move down, I have to move my target up. So keep this in mind. When you're using one of these sticks, if you want to go up, move down. If you want to go down, move up. So I want to go down 10 inches, so I'm going to move up on the stick. I'm going to move my target up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, this is what we need to do to Dick. Says I have to go down. No way. So this is the part where either you rent an excavator and learn how to run it, or then you get out your shovels and you start digging a lot of dirt. If you're planning on doing a do-yourself project, if you're building a big area, you're going to have to either get someone in to excavate it or learn how to run an excavator, or then be prepared to do a lot of hand digging. All right, there's my shovel right over there. It's my shovel. I'm gonna be using that, and let me show you guys the new and improved shovel that I'm gonna be nice enough to let DJ run, okay? Steve just brought this thing brand new, brand new from the plant this morning. He brought it in on our big peat. There you go. It's beautiful, isn't it? It's, I'm so kind, am I not? Razorback. It's a Razorback. I'll just run that rusty old bobcat over there, and I'll give you this treasure. I'd be, I'd be honored. I figured you would. Be careful with it, use it respectfully, treat it well, and it will treat you well. Yeah, sure. Hey, DJ, I'm doing my job. I'm running my Bobcat. Why aren't you running your Razorback? I lost it. Go find it. Do your job. I am. I'm holding the camera. Oh, okay. Listen here, guys. I know you want to see what I'm digging, but he has to put down the camera so he can go run the shovel. I'm sorry. I'll show you some more whenever he's done. Whenever I start to dig, I'll dig a little area, and I've done it long enough that I'm so good, like, <laughs> I, I start to dig and I'm like, okay, that's about where it's gonna be. And then I'll jump out of the excavator and I'll check my green. Am I, am I close? Not even. Okay, deeper or? Deeper. Deeper? What? <laughs> what about down here? Because okay, so there's one tooth, one tooth made it deep enough. That, that's pretty close. So yeah, I, 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 I should have been a little bit deeper. I'll tell you what threw me off. Remember this thing was a little bit high? Yeah. That's and I'd figured 10 inches from there to there, and so that's not quite right. Yeah. So, so yeah. But anyways, practice makes perfect. I'll go back in the machine and run it some more, and probably 3,000 jobs from now, I'll be good enough that we won't even need a laser. Don't count on it.